Hello and welcome to Art Fabula YouTube channel. Uh, this is the first video I made with this new setting I have with those two things I have in the background. And with new camera and with the new lights. So I hope you like this uh, new setting and I hope you the, I hope the quality is a little bit better. I'm trying to learn this thing about uh, camera camera and uh, uh, lightning uh, so I'm going to try to improve a little bit more uh, but right now I think this is enough uh, so oh, well I hope you enjoy the new setting uh, I just wanted to present what I'm going to do today I'm going to uh, make a little short video about uh, how to make an art toy and this is the first part of many parts and this is going to help the podcast I'm making too in the same subject about how to make an art toy. I got a lot of questions from you on Instagram and Twitter and other platforms uh, so I hope these questions get answered right now and in the subsequent videos for all of you. So I think this is the best, the best way to do it instead of just answer those uh, questions that I got one after the other. I think the best way is to put some kind of video and the podcast too, just to help everyone out there. Uh, the first video, or also this one, today's video, uh, we are going to work with two things. Uh, where to get the, the idea and trying to set up an objective with uh, your toy, with your brand and with your company or with your company. So this is just the, the first uh, thing you need to do uh, and then in a subsequent video we are going to put everything in practice. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you with real examples, I'm going to show you with both Eggy and Captain Beep of how I made them uh, and maybe they will help you uh, and of course the Koburingo too. This is a good thing because I'm going to uh, explain uh, a little bit of the process of making a vinyl toy, a resin toy and a Sofubi toy because I'm, uh, I have made all of those three uh, kind of toys. So. We are going to talk about vinyl, resin and soft vinyl. And we are going to talk also about the selling of the toy, about the marketing of the toy, about the best printers, 3D printers and everything. So why don't we begin right now? What do you think? Let's do it. As you see in this uh, screen, yeah, you can see uh, uh, the idea began as a some kind of a mask with arms some kind of a robot uh, with legs um, and so, something like that so, something something soft this is what I wanted I wanted to make something around something uh, with uh, some kind of simple form on it not so complicated uh, and I thought that this round form of the eyes and of the uh, yeah well of the mask will be perfect but of course I'm not sure why but I'm very very I like these horns in the mask I don't know why I like horns it's maybe because I'm, well I'm not sure I'm evil <laughs> evil <laughs> I don't know uh, the thing is that I uh, began to put my vision on paper, well, on computer, on Illustrator, and I began just to make different versions of this first uh, thought that I had. I used it to make a round thing, some kind of a boomerang likeness, I don't know, I'm not sure what this was half moon maybe with two eyes and then I put uh, the arms on it and then I began to uh, do other things uh, to make a little bit softer down the outside 
uh, play a little bit with the with the uh, forms and maybe maybe not surround so a little more oval form uh, change a little bit this down size the the the, uh, the body part uh, and then I began to uh, think about the horns and change the eyes. As, as you see here in this uh, form, in this version, this is, uh, we can see a little bit of egg there. And I like that one. But I like it also, this, or these different versions, I meant version C, it's like a robot. This one, version B, is something like an egg. And version C is like a robot. I play a little with them, little, a little with the forms, and then I got. Uh, I began with the legs and played with the legs. So I choose uh, the version D and uh, played also with uh, the sides of this uh, toy. And this is something I wanted to, to talk about because this is uh, something that came uh, after uh, is this kind of egg form inside the mask and the first version I wanted to do in the original version of the toy was to make uh, an egg with a mask on it so you can you could put a mask and uh, change it but the problem is uh, that when uh, you make the 3D, uh, this is going to be very, very difficult. You, you need to do a mask that is capable of uh, pass this side, mid side of the toy, and that it, it, it don't sit too loose on the body. So this idea, first idea, changed a little bit inside in the middle of the process. So there you got the uh, toy, the idea of a very simple one, uh, but something that I liked a lot. Then I began to play with details. I had the shoes uh, and then maybe some kind of uh, flying egg, something like that. And then I thought about maybe do something like that. A uh, backpack, why not? I love backpacks. So this is this is something that, this, this toy has a lot of things for me. I like um, the horns uh, because I'm a little bit evil inside maybe, I don't know. And then the backpack because I love the backpacks. Um, so, well, uh, after I played a little bit with the backpacks, with the uh, wings and everything, I, I decided to, to make this backpack version here. So then I had my uh, toy, my idea. I began to play a little bit with the uh, legs and add this kind of uh, feather things. Uh, these feather things, uh, I made them after I made the 3D. I outsourced the, the 3D uh, toy. So it, uh, they, bled, they carved it, uh, those feathers, on the manufactory. And so this is the version I sent to the uh, 3D modeler, Dante similar version, not this one, uh, to make the 3D toy. Then I made the details about the colors for the factory. Uh, and here I presented an hex system. Uh, you usually work with Pantone. Uh, but uh, this, in this moment, when I made this first time, I didn't have the resource, I didn't have a Pantone, Pantone uh, colors with me, palette with me. Uh, so that, this, this one toy was very artisanal made. I, I used, uh, I made with this Calibrate uh, screen, I made the colors I wanted. 
and then I send this version to the factory and they put the colors on it. And this is the back, the back and the detail, detail of the backpack. This is uh, the 3D model that uh, Dante Rockford did for me, uh, based on my designs. Uh, he did a very, very, very good job uh, trying to understand what I wanted. Of course, I didn't just send the, three, the, the 2D design. I talked to him, I explained uh, all the details and he understood everything perfectly. So I got my 3D design. Uh, and this is signed, uh, this 3D thing, together with my color details. Uh, those two things when one uh, sent to uh, the factory. And, the, and then it began a long process to make this toy. Uh, I did also uh, the uh, packaging, the design of the packaging, I, mean, I will show you. Uh, in a few seconds. Here are the design of the uh, packaging for the toy. Uh, I got some kind of template from the factory and then I began to make my own uh, design. I, go, I began to play with the elements and began to play with the colors too. Uh, I, have, I did, I think, six different versions and then I chose the, the one I like the most. This one was the first one. I played with two colors, in the red and the uh, blue, and then I played also with this kind of mask in the red color. Uh, the second version this was very similar, but this was just all red color. I liked it, that one a lot, but this one didn't match the design, the colors of the toy, so I didn't choose that one. Uh, the third one was very, very similar. Not sure what is what different uh, thing is. Yes, uh, here we didn't have the eggy name as we have here, uh, and the uh, design of the toy is bigger, the illustration of the toy is bigger than in that one. Um, but the problem here is, well, it's exactly the same, the colors. Then the fifth one is was it's the definitive one. Yes, I made five, not six. Uh, and this one is the, the one I sent to the uh, factory. Uh, and now, uh, in this part of the process, I had the Pantone colors, so I made my Pantone uh, colors and the mask color too of the Pantone, and then as I sent that, I sent it to uh, the factory, and the factory did a very good job uh, for the most part, uh, but it had a little bit of problems with a few things that I didn't like. Uh, maybe this. Uh, figure was smaller in the reality than in the in my design. So after I got the I sent the, the design of the packaging packaging I just wait, waited and waited and waited and then I got something in the mail. So the process from designing to sending to the factory is very easy, is, uh, is the, the easiest part of everything. Uh, of course you need to think about every step you take and you need to think about the process in the beginning. So, so you, you, can, you can't design a toy without thinking about how you are going to uh, manufacture it. Uh, so you need to know that part before you design the toy or when you are designing the toy. But you have control in this part. You begin, you draw, you design your toy, and it's you that made all the steps, that made all the decisions. So you have control. But the problem is when you send it to the factory, then something changed. And it changed it for me. It changed it very much for me, because uh, that was, this was the first toy I made that one. Uh, Eggy, and I didn't know how to make this toy. 
Uh, so I draw it, uh, I made the 3D as I told you, uh, and then I send it the 3D uh, to the factory. And everything was good in the beginning, everything was very, no, well, that's the way you should do it. Uh, but there were a few problems. Um, the biggest problem was with the molding process. Uh, if I take, for example, this uh, toy, uh, this is a prototype toy, uh, one of the biggest problems uh, is uh, this feather toy, this feather drawing. Uh, they made it, I wanted to change because this, this part wasn't, it, it didn't have the feathers in the beginning. So what I wanted them to do is to make the feathers after I have designed the plain uh, body for the for the uh, for Aggie. Uh, so that this change that I made afterwards, uh, I throw it to the factory. Please help me making these feathers uh, in 3D. And they tried, and they sent me this prototype with the feathers drawn by drawn by hand, and it was horrible, as I told you. Um, and then uh, I wanted them to carve these uh, feathers on the toy, as you can see, for example, in the final toy. Those ones are carved. Um, that was the first. Uh, change I made afterwards, the, a change I didn't think about in the beginning that co cost me more money to, to do. Uh, the other uh, problem, uh, it didn't cost me money but it cost me time, and time in this business is money, was to uh, make the body of AG in, 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 in one type of process. That was impossible to do. I wanted everything made, be made in uh, roto molding, but the problem was the legs. The legs uh, they were impossible to make in uh, roto molding. They were made in injection uh, vinyl processing. Um, so they send the legs and the legs molding to another factory to make those legs in injection molding. And it took a lot of time, it took very, very, very long time. And then the third problem was the painting of this. And it took also a lot of time, but it wasn't a big problem because they, they fixed it very well and they did a very, very, very good job with the toy. So I got uh, this incredible design, incredible made vinyl toy uh, and I was happy, I was very very happy, like a child and because for the first time in 15 years since I began uh, thinking about uh, art toys in, in this is 15, those 15 years I got at least to make my own vinyl toy. So as you see everything you control going to be perfect but as soon as you left this uh, toy to another person or another factory or the factory uh, it's going to happen uh, a lot of things and you need to think about this you need to, to think how many for example uh, if you are serious about this if you want to make a company if you want to make a brand you need to think how many toys uh, do they need to make uh, to, to keep these things going because it's going to take time. You, you can't just make 50 toys uh, and then sell them and when you sell it then begin the, the design of the next one because if you do that then it's going to take maybe you sell your 50 toys and people are waiting for your next toy uh, and it's going to take 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 more months months uh, to, to make the next one and people don't want to wait so long and it's, it's not it's not good for you either because you need you need the money uh, to continue making these things um, so you need to be prepared for, if you are just if you are serious if you want just to make one toy well of course you uh, whatever you want 
But uh, as I told you, if you are serious, you need to think about all the process, and you need to think, you need to have uh, a few designs and, and a few toys in uh, production, maybe at the same time, because some toy will get uh, earlier than the other one, and things can change. Thank you very much for being here until the end. I hope you liked this uh, first video in the series of the creation of our toys. We are going to make a lot of uh, YouTube videos uh, just for you, so you can begin making your own vinyl toys, resin toys, Sofubi toys. Um, please, uh, this is going to help us, help me uh, a lot. Subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, leave your questions here right down, right down uh, and follow us on uh, the YouTube channel, of course, the podcast, uh, Art Fabula Podcast, in your favorite uh, podcast app. And uh, also, if you want to support us, uh, you can uh, get all my toys uh, in uh, artfabula.com. This is my website for all art fabula. So thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you take your time to be in this channel. Uh, and we see you next time. Bye.